Okay, here at HappyNaturalHorse.com, today we're going to talk about the equine digestion. Okay? For health in any species, it all begins with digestion. So we need to understand the equine digestive tract in order to best feed our horses. Without the understanding, a horse can indeed become a hay burner with less than optimal health and resistance to disease. Although far too many owners think that all herbivores are identical in reality, horses are classified as monogastric herbivores, meaning they only have a single stomach. Their natural diet consists only of large amounts of grasses and some herbs. In fact, it is through constant supply of natural dry grasses that horses were able to keep warm in all open steps. The digestive process created body heat which <clears throat> was then maintained by almost constant movement. So let's take a quick look at the gastrointestinal tract for the average horse. The mouth and the throat. Equine digestion begins in the mouth, okay? As horses nip forage off of their incisors or front teeth, they grind horses are grinders, a large amount of the result, resultant cellulose with their powerful molars or back teeth in a side-to-side -side, almost circular motion. So if you watch the Palomino there and you see how she's chewing, you can actually see the jaw going side by side by side. Three pairs of the glands Okay, so while it does that side by side, it moistens a mucus laden bolus. Three pairs of the gland, pateroid, submacularly, and subglenal, produce up to 10 gallons of saliva per day in a healthy, mature horse. Bet you didn't know that. <laughs> the bolus then travels down their long, approximately four and a half feet esophagus, essentially a muscular tube to reach the stomach. As a grazer, a horse is designed to both eat and drink with its head down and is subject to choke, poor thyroid function, and even strain in the front hooves and legs if they eat from the raised position. Upper gut is a compromise of the stomach and the small intestine. The stomach has an 8 and 17 quart capacity, only 10% of the digestive tract, <clears throat> whereas in the cattle, the stomach equals 75% of the total. Okay, horses are 10, cows are 70. Okay, what does that mean? Since the equine stomach can only hold 0.3% of their body weight at one time, that means they are only digesting to eat constant small amounts of high fibrous food. The stomach then empties, empties into a 17-foot, 48-capacity small intestine. So it, then the stomach, it doesn't stay long, it travels to the small intestine. This is where most of the protein and the fat, the vitamins and minerals contained in the forage are digested via various enzymes. Since the horse, and this is a great important thing to remember, gall, they have no gallbladder. The bile constantly flows to the small intestine from the liver. Nutrients are then absorbed through the walls of the small intestine into the blood and delivered to various cellulose structures. Nearly 50 to 70 percent of all carbohydrates, digestion and absorption, and almost all amino acid absorption occurs in the small intestines. The hindgut. Equines have the largest most complex hind cut of any domestic animal. It is designed to have a constant supply of fiber, natural fiber, to, to maintain normal gastrointestinal pH, motility, and function. The first part of the hind gut is the sacrum, a, black, a blind sac approximately four foot long with 30 to 40 quart capacity, acting as a seven hour micro bile incolonation vat similar to that of a remnant in a cow. Microbes break down under digestive feed producing vitamin K, B complex vitamins, B protein, and vital fatty acids. Provided 
constant energy, providing a constant energy source. While acting as a first line of defense, as a growth inhibitor against most, most pathogens and disease causing bacteria and parasites. Because both of its entrance and exits are in a, at the top, if too much concentrates arrives in the sacrum at one time, there will be little room for the bacteria to work to complete the process. So that's why it's important not to overfeed uh, carbohydrate grains, not hay, grains. Okay, so, too much concentrated arrives in the sacrum at one time, there will be little room for bacteria to work to complete the process. This can cause some compaction in the lower end, thus causing pain. The second section of the hindgut is the colon, about 12 feet long, with a holding capacity of 80 to 90 quarts. Wow! Food will stay there for 40 to 65 hours, while most microbial digestion continues, most of the nutrients made through the microbial digestion are dis absorbed. In addition to the vitamins and fatty acids absorbed in the colon, water is also absorbed, resulting in fecal ball formation. And this is how we have fecal balls, which are the undigested and mostly indigestible portion of what was fed. And then they are passed from the rectum. So. Take a look at your horse's manure. See where your grain is. If you're seeing grain in your manure, your horse is not digesting properly with the enzymes. My horse's manure, they digest everything. I feed very little grain, concentrated grain. I only feed the Stanley hay pellets, Timothy, and sometimes orchard grass. And then this is what they get during the day. They get hay and the big sky minerals, which also has some um, enzymes to help with the digestion. But their enzyme activity starts in the grinding of the saliva. That's where the enzyme starts. The pH of the balance of the gut is a major key to equine health. The formation process initiated in the sacrum and the finalized nation of the colon. It is dependent upon the alkaline hindgut. This is what supports the beneficial bacterial colonies necessary for the entire process. Without robust intestinal colonies, horses become prey not only to colic, but to also virtually all disease states. Those colonies are the body's first line of defense against all pathogens, disease-causing microbes. This is very important, and this is why we feed the high track or the Dynapro from Dynamite. You can stuff all the probiotics into a horse, but unless it activates it when it gets to the horse's gut, you're just wasting your money. Our product is not a live probiotic. It is a probiotic that once it hits the horse's gut, it starts the probiotic process and the balance of the pH. All these are indicators that are critical if your horse, let's see, if there's a change of weather, okay, all of these can indicate the critical intestinal bacterial colonies. It takes a full two years to develop an appropriate appropriate bacterial colony which can die off quickly. It can take between two, three to three weeks to three months to rebuild these colonies back to full function and mature horses. That's why it's important when you have a underweight horse, a horse that's been sickly, that you give, you, you balance that pH of the gut with either high track or the Dynapro. I'm sorry, there's no other product out there in the United States. I'm sorry, there's just not. Dynapro from Dynamite and High, high Track from um, Big Sky Minerals. You can get it at my site at happynaturalhorse.com. Okay? So it's important to rebuild that bacterial colony in the horse's gut. The, this alkaline requirement of intestinal health has been understood instinctively for thousands of years by humankind. Various fermented, fermented foods such as silage, kefir, and even fermented mother's milk were given a matter of course to help support optimum health by supporting intestinal environment rather than only adding bacteria themselves. Today, there are new, numerous probiotic formulations available which attempt to add only the beneficial bacteria to the gut. Unfortunately, natural stomach acids, the natural stomach acid, okay, that tends to destroy these bacteria on their way to their destination. That's why ours activates it once it gets there. 
in truth, equines can garner these microbes naturally from their environment. What they do need, however, is the return of the fermentation products to help maintain and grow their existent, existing bacterial colonies, especially when in contact with human need and usage. Okay, so this is our digestion. Do you understand it? If you have any questions, please leave a comment below this video. And please w visit my website at www.happynaturalhorse.com. All, um, all this is documented in my new book, Natural Equine Remedies. A book that I wrote so that you can understand a horse's diet, his digestion, and what to do in case of an emergency, especially colic. Okay? All right. Today, hopefully, I'll have another video out on muscle testing and talking to your horse. Have a good day. This is Lori Broccoloni.